if you don't already know why you're here today we're going to be turning one of these acoustic panel frame into this I'll walk you through on what you need and what to do So probably the first thing you're going to need is to build this frame right here. Um, you just want to get one by fours, measure out two of the same pieces of wood for one side, two of the same lengths for the other. doesn't matter what size. Uh, I would recommend if it's any bigger than this, you put cross braces right here and here on all the corners and then put one in the back going across right here. Um, that'll keep it from shifting like this, but this isn't going to be too heavy. so. I'm not going to do that on this one. Next, you will need your backing cloth or some kind of cloth. This is just like a cotton broadcloth. Um, I think it was like $3.99 per yard. So we're going to lay that right here. And we're going to take our panel right here. And just keep in mind, whatever size you do build, the fabric usually only comes in a one yard section and then Usually with the fabric companies, if you get over a certain amount of yards, they keep it as one piece. Unless you go and get a custom cut, uh, that's what you're going to have to deal with. So, Once you know you got lined up where you want it, go ahead and tack a staple right here. I did fold the end in, so it kind of will extend the life of this fabric. got this from Harbor Freight it's a uh, pretty good I mean it got the staple embedded pretty well and I'll probably put like eight to ten of these in the side and make just make sure it's lined up along the width as you go and this is the back so you'll be covering the rest with the face fabric that you choose put a few more in So you can see the other side is a little bit higher than this one, which is okay. I'm just gonna stretch it a tad. You don't wanna do it too much. You don't wanna start ripping the corners. So we're just gonna do our best to keep them, keep it stretched going along all the way down. Sides are done. We'll end up with something like that so far, and then we'll do the sides. We'll tuck them and do those, and then we'll do the cutting of the rock wool. And for the corners, basically, I'll put my little fold in that fabric, and it's, that's the one coming from the one I just stapled. I'm gonna hold it down, just basically parallel with a piece of wood, and I'm gonna put one here. Then, that'll basically let you be able to stretch it the rest of the way while keeping it lined up with this back edge right here. And we're gonna tuck this. We wanna make sure it's tucked so it doesn't overhang. Reason for that later. So I just face it. The 
Same thing right here. take our fabric it will unfold and we can pull it the length of the wood here tuck that remember it doesn't have to be perfect staple here the back the next part can get itchy so if you want to wear gloves and a long shirt you can I'm used to dealing with fiberglass and stuff so I'm not worried about it so I usually place this to where it's about a little over the inside edge of this piece so when I cut it it'll be a tight fit as I picked it up from Walmart and that's what I used to cut insulation in the vocal booth also uh, so we're going to cut that with this and run it along this edge. So you can finish it the rest of the way. There you go. Here's your piece. And now we will take this and we're gonna stuff that in here. It's a little too big, that's okay. Try to get you in the frame here. We're gonna go ahead and just stuff that like that, tuck the corners, the edges, and just stuff whatever you can. Anything extra is gonna be good. So, just stuff it in there like so. I'm gonna make sure it's past the wood because this is gonna be your face. So, you want the face to look nice and pretty, most likely. I might cut this one a little too big, but you get the gist of it. I'm not here to show you perfection. I'm just trying to get my studio finished. Um, just examine it like this, make sure it's flat. And then, yeah, the back side, whenever this is together, I'll flatten it out like it's supposed to be. We'll put this front fabric on now. This is what I picked. I like it because the color scheme and I want my studio to be bright and colorful. So I think that takes care of that. Those are like my favorite colors. So this is what we're gonna use to go over the face of this. It should go over both edges and end up like that on the back side. You know, tucked around the back. So get it to where have a little bit of overhang on both sides. Roughly that much will be okay. This is the back side, so this doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want, like I said before, you want enough. I know I cut this fabric a little bit over, so I'm gonna roll those edges backwards and make a nice tight fit and make it look nice and clean, you know? So I'm gonna start with this right here. Triple check because you don't want to not have enough. That's perfect right there. So I'm gonna do a little corner first. Right, just like that. And we're gonna staple that down. Right on. We want the same curl on the back side. I guess you could call that a hem. I don't know. I'm not like, I don't do fabric that much, but I can do enough to get something done. So I'm gonna go down and tack this.
right? You're kind of getting the gist, all right? It doesn't have to be like stretched or anything as long as you keep like the same hem length. So I'm like going like maybe a half inch over the edge there. Putting it right in the sideboard. Same hem length right there. And then you want to just stretch it across the whole rest of the length. It is hot as shit out right now, even though the sun's going down, it's still humid. So, it's always that. Summer is my least favorite time of year. I can tell you that. All right, so that's one side done. Now we're gonna stretch it to the other side and do the same thing. So you do want to make sure one thing and that's that you stretch this all the way and make sure it's not, you know, you're not pulling it too hard, but make sure it's all even when you flip it over. So you don't have to worry about it uh, kinking up on the other side. And for this side, I'm probably going to start in the center. And see, I can see that slack I just pulled out. I can take that, fold it underneath and boom, right there. Now I got a tack mark. I mean, that's a good little start. And we'll just keep moving down the line. And keep stretching, making sure it's stretched. And you're gonna have to go little by little to maintain the same line that you want. This side is not gonna be seen. So, do a little stretch, make a little love, get down tonight, kill some sound tonight. So you should end up with something like that. Just like that right there. Bam. Look how clean that is, man. That's sick. Badass. I love it. Look how clean that is. And to cut this fabric, basically what I did was I just laid it on my countertop, took a took my frame and laid it on the fabric and did the same thing I'm doing here and kind of just stretched it over the frame to get it pretty close to where I want it. And if you don't pull, if you don't pull it too tight, you should end up with your, whatever your pattern is not looking warped and stuff. That's another reason why you don't want to pull it too tight, you don't want the fabric to rip or anything like that. There's your whole back side. It should overlay like that. But we'll do the same kind of fold we did on the other side too. So we'll uh, basically grab this corner, make a little tiny fold there, just like that. And then this will be covered so you can just tack here. And then put one about halfway there and then when you unfold this corner to come down this won't get in the way of this fabric laying down kind of like that you see that look how clean that is 
with how clean that edge is. Now if I can only get the pattern to match, I don't really care about that though, honestly. If I can get it looking like that, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm gonna tack a corner right here. Bam. I think I hit another staple on that one, so I'm gonna put one more right there. And then we'll go ahead and do this side next. I'm just gonna show you guys this one more time. See how I'm keeping that folded edge along the inside right there. Right, and then you just kind of fold down. And then you'll go here. for your next fold, which then goes, you tuck this in, and then you take this corner, make it flat with the edge here, then when you roll your edge right here, and lay it down, tack it, it'll be similar on both sides. Now, you can just pull stretch a little bit, tuck, there you go. See, just want to tuck that edge. This little phrase, you can probably just burn those off or something. See, I mean, it's like, it's just, that ain't coming apart, dude. There's no way that's coming apart, and these will last for a long while. Let's just put it that way. I tried to make this one pretty quick. Um, if you're still stuck around to this part, this is what you're gonna have when you're done. This is the corners. Looks super clean. Fabric's not too tight. It's a little frays, but you can burn those back, front. That's what's gonna hang on the wall. Yeah, if you do like my videos, guys, I appreciate any kind of support. Um, a like, comment, whatever. I don't mind talking to you guys. I like I like answering questions because it helps me learn stuff too. Usually, if I don't know the answer, I'm gonna try to look it up for you. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this. It's pretty cool, I think. And I'm gonna be doing the whole room in these, and then I'll have maybe some hanging from the ceiling too. Um, but yeah, so let's put the hanging strap on, and then we'll. We'll be finished. I'll be using these D-ring screw-in clips. Comes with screws in the D-ring. That's the mount. And then to suspend, uh, I got this picture frame wire right here. So if you were going with a bigger panel, uh, you would have those cross braces right here that I told you about. And you would keep those to the back and space them inward a little bit, like that far in. And then you can basically, let me see that, yeah. All right, and then you can take your hanger and put it on this part because most likely it'll be sitting vertical and that will give you a hidden hanger. These I'm gonna have to put kind of to the outside. You still won't see them when it's hanging. That's what it ends up looking like. Pretty clean looking, I mean, and you wanna adjust this where both sides of the wire, the wire you don't want to pass this point right here. There you go. Now you got both D rings in there. Pretty nice. All right, so this picture frame wire, there's no special way to this, but what I'll show you what I usually do. So I'll go like that through, and I'll go through this loop 
back. Show you again. Under, through this loop, and then back through this loop that you just made. And it's gonna be a little tight to pull. But you want excess, so just tighten this knot up. Don't tighten anything else, just the knot. Pull it a little tight and then it will slip down. You just saw. And you pull both sides, and that's good enough, honestly. And then you can take your excess and just wrap it around this wire, just like this. Try to make sure there's no burrs that nobody's going to catch their cell phone. That's pretty good. Yeah. Show you a little more close up on how I did that. And that's not going anywhere. This thing only weighs like four pounds, five pounds, maybe six. So, so you can get these uh, little furniture sliders, little felt furniture sliders. They're pretty expensive. I mean, I think I got this pack right here, which was 30, 32 felt pads in a pack for like 15 bucks or 12 bucks, which is pretty high. So I went ahead and just cut some in half and then I'm gonna stack them. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna raise the back because when you hang this, it automatically is gonna keep it a certain distance off the wall. Uh, so you wanna kinda match it so it's even and you'll get the most out of your panels like this. Um, so yeah, I'll probably take like, I guess three, maybe four, I think is what I was planning, four of them. So you stack them like that. <clears throat> Just like that. And then we're going to take a nail. We're gonna put it through it and then we'll go the rest of the way into the wood and pin it to it. So yeah, we'll go like this. Take it, put it in the, pretty much the center of it. Try to hold it straight. Into the concrete a little bit. And you'll end up with something like that. And I don't really have a great workbench, so. Um, I do what I can. So we'll hold it about right there. Hammer it down till it indents. And you got yourself a standoff. With the wire. So now that'll sit off the wall. And that's also for if I wanna put LEDs behind it which I, don't, I haven't figured that one out yet. I might piece, put a piece of wood from here to here to shine LEDs up through, but I don't know yet. When I get to that, I'll show you guys. Let's go hang this. All right, so I already measured my hole and I want it to be decently evenly spaced between the TVs. You go. You take your panel, go a little blow, like hanging a picture. Voila. There's your acoustic panel. Get the most out of it, space it across the wall. Super sweet. And then I'll have one more right there. And then I'm gonna put two more underneath there whenever I back my studio desk off and get a new desk. So.
and I appreciate the hell out of you guys watching. Thanks. Y'all have a good one. Hey.